Hello and welcome. I'm Ijeoma Onyato. Tonight, the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Adam Zoshomele, rules out automatic tickets for returning members, says party is for people with shared ideology. Whereabouts of the senator representing Kogi West unknown after failing to appear before Kogi State Magistrate Court to answer charges bordering on alleged gun running. Coalition of Civil Society Organizations released reports on equity governorship election, frowns on vote buying phenomenon, and lack of budget for INEC nine months to the 2019 general elections. And former cricketer Imran Khan claims victory in Pakistan's election amid accusations of electoral fraud. On business news tonight, Nigeria's crude cargo exports face oversupply on the market as traders await loading program for September. And on sports news tonight, the Falconets of Nigeria set for the 2018 FIFA Under-20 Women's World Cup in France next month after head coach Christopher Danjuma names his final squad for the tournament. From Abuja, President Buhari calls for increased sub-regional cooperation to effectively tackle the challenge of terrorism in West Africa. tonight with the comments from the national chairman of the ruling all progressives congress regarding the recent defection by members of the party in the national assembly who now pitch their tent with the opposition mr adams Oshomale says the promises of automatic tickets given to the defectors by the people's democratic party are a mirage and once the haze clears such defectors would be welcome to the all progressives congress but he says they will not be lured back with automatic tickets or money he was speaking at a meeting with the caucus of the ruling party in the House of Representatives. Our correspondent, Kayla Negwa, reports. Members of the APC caucus in the House of Representatives making their way into the APC secretariat in Abuja. It is an important meeting following the mass defection of 37 House of Representatives members from the APC on Tuesday, July the 24th. Change, change. The chairman of the party assures members that the party will address the dissents and grievances expressed by members at the state level. But he sends a strong message to members of the party who defected recently. I say to those who say they are going to PDP, go, that is where you belong. If you left there because you thought that the culture of sharing the money will be further, will be deep in APC, and you have found that sharing the money is not part of it, and you choose to return back, good luck. But you must know that the access to CPN has been cut off, the access to NAPC has been cut off, the access to combating defense spending to private pocket has been cut off. After the address by the chairman, the APC lawmakers go into a closed-door session with the party leadership. Emerging from the private meeting, the lawmakers say they are resolute in their commitment to the party. The euphoria is over now, and they're beginning to see, they're beginning to feel their way, and beginning to see, oh my God, did I make a mistake? Or was this a knee-jerk reaction? Uh, why did I do this? And you know of uh, some senators who have retraced their steps. Uh, we be, believe that there will be members who also retrace, retrace their, their steps. Members also affirm their confidence uh, in, the, in the leadership of uh, uh, the APC, the National Working Committee, commended the National Chairman for all the legworks that uh, he has been doing. The National Chairman of the APC, Adams Oshomole, is taking a tough stance on the defection of party members. Meanwhile, the senior special assistant to President Buhari on National Assembly matters says there's a lot of room left for reconciling aggrieved party members who defected recently. All the grievances expressed by the distinguished senators and all members, none is attributed or directed at President Muhammadu Buhari. A great number of them have indicated that even if they pursue their bid on different platforms, they will still campaign for the president 
for President Buhari in 2019 on the platform of the APC. Senator Enang maintains that President Buhari desires a cordial working relationship with the legislature. Kayla Magua, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the Benue State Governor Samuel Otom has been speaking on the reasons for his defection from the ruling All Progressives Congress to the opposition PDP. Governor Otom says the protest by youths in the state who prevented him from traveling to Abuja for the APC conciliation meeting on Wednesday broke his heart as they gave him reasons to resign from the APC and seek protection for the security of the state. Governor Tom made this explanation while receiving his former colleagues as local government chairman in 1992 under the aegis of former council chairman grassroots support for a Tom 2019 at the government house in Makudi. If you're, you're sojourn in a place and for obvious reasons you have to leave to another location, and when you go there, you have the capacity to assess the former location and then where you have sojourned. And if you discover that that one is not good enough, you go back to where you came from. And that is what I've done. So it's as simple as that. There's no qualms about this. I feel that as I'm seeking for justice for my people, equity and fairness, I will get it from fighting through uh, PDP, and that is where we are. And still on the crisis rocking the APC, the Kwara state governor, Abul Fatah Ahmed, has also given a hint of his plan to decamp to another party soon, as he blames the APC for victimization and inability to meet the yearnings of its members. But another group within the party, known as the Buhari Support Group, are asking the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, to urgently resign from the party, since he is no more loyal to the party and the President. <laughs> The voice of solidarity has taken over the streets of Ilorin in Kwara State. These are supporters of the All Progressive Congress. As they move through the metropolis, either on foot or motorcycles, their chant is synchronized. The crowd also has the bone to pick with the prominent member of the political class in Kwara, the Senate President, who they claim is involved in anti-party activities. The spokesperson of the group relayed their message. And, uh, we saw the colossal fellows in our nation's democracy that is being, actually, we fight the National Assembly as hijack the functions of our executives. And we are by calling on the Senate President, Senator Bukola Saraki, that we want him to resign right away. In another part of town, aggrieved members of the APC have gathered with their own agitations, and the governor responds to them with a statement. They have come to tell us that you want us to move on to a new platform that will give us room to meet our aspirations for the good of quarrels. By the grace of God Almighty, we will get a response very soon and very clear. But one thing is as clear as a crystal. You, the stakeholders, you have told us that we should move out of A, B, C. The news appears to have the backing of the people as they break into song and dance, brandishing their party cards. Things are certainly getting interesting in Quara, and eyes are on how these announcements will affect the political scene in the state. The Nigerian police authorities are insisting that the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, has a case to answer in the ongoing investigation into the infamous offer bank robbery of April the 5th, when no fewer than 30 people were killed. 
The police, however, stated clearly that the Director of Public Prosecutions of the Federation did not restrain or restrict the force from investigating the indictments against the Senate President and the Governor of Kwara State. A statement by the Force Public Relations Officer, Jimo Mashud, says the DPP's advice did not exonerate the Senate President, but called for further investigation into the matter. The statement also explains that Senator Saraki's letter to the police investigation team was not detailed enough and was discovered to require further clarification and interrogation. The Senate President had written a second letter to the police where he denied any connection with the Offa Bank robbery suspects. The police statement is in reaction to some media reports which claim that the Attorney General of the Federation has exonerated the Senate President of complicity in the bank robbery due to lack of sufficient evidence by the police. In the meantime, the whereabouts of the lawmaker representing Kogi West in the National Assembly, Senator Dino Malay, is still unknown. Reports of his alleged whereabouts filtered in early this morning, with conflicting accounts on whether or not he was abducted on his way to Lokoja, where he's standing trial for alleged aiding criminals and attempting suicide, and was billed to appear in court today. This tweet from Senator Ben Mori Bruce shifted the gears of a very eventful week in the Nigerian political scene a notch higher. In the tweet, which was put up at 10.33 a.m. on Thursday, Senator Bruce claimed that his colleague representing Kogi West Senatorial District, Dino Melai, had been abducted by unknown persons on his way to Kogi State. He was to appear before the magistrate court sitting in Okoja, the state capital, on separate charges of allegedly aiding criminals and attempted suicide. At the heavily secured magistrate court in Lokoja, the senator is not present, but his lawyer, who is represented, told the court that Senator Melai was attacked in Guagualada on his way to Lokoja and his whereabouts remain unknown. The third defendant, our client, was unable to show in court because uh, the information at our disposal was that on his way to court, somewhere near Gogolada, he was uh, attacked. And uh, up to now, I've not been able to reach him to know exactly what happened. I only passed on the information to the court as received. That's all. And uh, the court gave him the benefit of the doubt and excused his absence. We were not aware. The police as an institution has not been notified about his attack. Uh, but we couldn't join issues with, with uh, the defense counsel because he passed that information from the bar. And so we left it to the discretion of the court to act appropriately. And so on the whole, the matter was adjourned to 9th August. While the case has been adjourned, it is now the responsibility of security operatives to comb through the evidence and unravel what exactly transpired. Meanwhile, police authorities say they've not received any complaint or report in any of its police stations from any member of Senator Dino Malaya's family, friends and associates to ascertain that the senator was indeed kidnapped. The police spokesperson, Mr. Jimmo Mashud, says they've commenced investigation into the purported kidnap and wants any of his family members, friends and associates who witnessed the kidnap of the senator to report the incidents to the nearest police station to assist the police in its investigations. Two other security matters and troops of Operation Lafia Dole are said to have repelled an attack on Jakhana in Borno State, northeast Nigeria. The Boko Haram militants reportedly laid siege on the town this evening in what's been described as a surprise attack on the residents, leading to a gun battle between them and the military. Casualties are said to have been recorded on both sides, but the exact number has not been made known. Our correspondent in Meduguri, the Borno State capital, gathered that the army is reinforcing to ensure that the attackers are defeated. In part two, after the break, the Akadi State governorship election may have come and gone, but let's find out what a coalition of civil society organizations is saying about it. We'll be joined by the director of Ford Foundation West Africa, Mr. Innocent Chukuma. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.